today we, it's like, I felt God wanted me to speak on hope. And that he is our living hope. And a lot of times, especially during these times, as a world, we've entered into a time when we have seen a pandemic like never before. And we have seen a lot of things happening that was probably unexpected for us. And because of it, we've seen a lot of people's hopes start to fail. We have seen a lot of hope start to dwindle or lose their hope. And so I'm going to start in Proverbs chapter 13. I'm only going to read one verse in it. And it says in Proverbs 13 verse 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And what this is talking about is a desire or a longing that either hasn't been fulfilled or it feels like it's taking forever. It makes our heart sick. We lose hope. We lose faith. We lose that confidence that God's going to do it. And we become weak in our faith. Because what happens is we're expecting God to do something and he doesn't do it. And we're like, well, God's never going to do it. And we start to become weak in our faith. We become to start, we begin to start looking at it. But if we see that desire, if we see that longing come to pass, all of a sudden we feel strengthened again. All of a sudden we're re-energized. But what I felt God showed me today was sometimes our perspective needs to shift. Our perspective needs to change. Because if we are putting our longings and our desires on things here, on things that we see, on things on earth, not always are those desires going to come to pass. And if we're putting our longings and our desires on those things and they don't come to pass, then what's going to happen to our trust in God? What's going to happen to our faith in God? Sometimes our expectations do not match up to the word of God. God promised us things, yes. God wants to give us the desires of our heart, yes. But according to the word of God, he will give us the desires of our heart if we delight ourselves in him. That means the purpose, the longing, the desires in our heart are going to line up with the plan of God. Amen. And that's what it's actually talking about. That's what it's meaning. This is why it's so important in the world that we live in today that we need to re-shift our mindset not to the hopes and the expectations that we have for things here, but we have to remember that our hope is in Christ. In Christ alone. For if our hope is in Him, then we will be strengthened in Him. We will be, um, we will regain energy as it's needed. Because yes, we get tired. Yes, we get weary. Yes, sometimes it's like, man, this is a long journey. But we will get that strength we need if we keep our eyes on Christ. God knows what we need. God knows his promise to us. But let us make sure that our hopes are not on the things that we desire in our flesh. Let's make sure that those hopes are in him and through him. Because he will fulfill his promises. With us or without us. He will fulfill his promises. He will continue his plan and purpose. But how can we continue if our faith is weak? How will we continue if it's not in the right place? So I want to turn to, um, to Romans chapter 8. 
And this is such an amazing chapter because not only does it talk about the redemption of our souls, but it's talking about a good perspective of our hope and where our hope should lie. And I'm going to be in Romans chapter 8, verses 18, starting at verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. This is our true hope. That we're not setting our eyes on things in front of us, but we are setting our eyes on the things to come. The future glory. The future hope. Paul is saying, look, though we're going through things here, he's saying it cannot be compared to what's coming. We cannot compare it to what's, ex what's waiting for us on the other side. Because Jesus promised that there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death, no more sickness. I'm looking forward to that. Because our bodies break down. Whether young or old, our bodies break down. Sometimes, some of us, the doctors can't figure it out. And what do we do? What do we do? Is our hope deferred? Is does my heart become sick because they can't figure me out? Or do I put my hope in him? Because he holds my future. He holds my purpose. He holds the plan in his hands. Not in me. I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what a month from now holds. I don't know what a year from now holds. I hope and pray that the pandemic is, you know, coming to a close. But even if it don't, will our hope become deferred? Will our faith become weak? Hear me say, come on, look to what's in the future. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. He's talking about Christ. He's talking about through man's disobedience, everything was brought under bondage of sin and judgment, right? The sin of Adam brought judgment to the world. Where there was emptiness, where there was everything that we needed in the garden, everything that was needed between the relationship with God, everything was complete. But the moment sin came into the world, all of a sudden there's vanity. All of a sudden there's emptiness. All of a sudden we feel aimless. How did we feel before we came to Christ? Like empty. Empty. I felt an emptiness. But Christ overcame it all. Christ conquered everything. He conquered the hopelessness. He conquered the vanity. He conquered the, the lack of, of purpose. He conquered that. He conquered the, the separation between us and the Father. Christ conquered all of it. So he goes on and it says, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. The earth itself is giving all the groaning. It's the earth itself. Look at all the tor tornadoes. Look at all the earthquakes. Look at everything that's happening even within the earth. And sometimes in our trials, sometimes in our tribulations, we have those same groanings within our spirit. We have those same, just, we have no words. But it's just a deep groaning where we're longing for the deliverance of God. We're longing for the hand of God to come in and snatch us up. 
We're longing for God to bring deliverance into our situation. We're longing for God to bring deliverance to this world or to deliver us out of the world, one or the other. It depends on where you're at. Me, I'm like, yeah, take me home, you know? But at the same time, even the earth itself feels the coming of the Lord. In our spirit, at the same time, we need to be anchored in a hope in Christ. Because if we have this hope, then we understand through our groaning, Lord, you're going to hear my cry. Through my groaning, Lord, you're going to hear and you're going to deliver and you're going to set me free because you have already delivered my soul from bondage. You've delivered my soul from sin. You've delivered my soul from iniquity. I believe that. I believe in that because I don't want to go to hell. But do we believe the same expectation? Do we have the same expectation? Do we have the same confidence when it comes to our trials, when it comes to our burdens, when it comes to our homes, our husbands, our, our loved ones, our children, the ones that are coming against us, our, in our jobs, in our finances? Do we have the same expectations in that? Do we have the same confidence in that? Lord, you know my needs and you will meet those needs. Lord, you know that I need this deliverance and you're going to deliver me in the perfect time. But in the meanwhile, my soul is groaning and it is longing for you, God, to intervene. It's longing for you, God, because I know you're the only one. Sometimes we're walking a very lonely road. Sometimes nobody can understand us. Sometimes we get angry because we feel alone. Sometimes we get upset because we feel like nobody can help us. And we begin to look at people like, you're failing me, but they can't help us. It's something that only the Lord can deliver us from. It's something only the Lord can do. God is in the midst. He is still into delivering today. Not just out of our bondage, but of our trials and our tribulations. He's still into wanting to reestablish your hope in Him. He's challenging us today not to lose hope. Not to give up because of what we see, but to long for those things that we cannot yet see. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> and it goes on. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Okay. That right there is a slap in the face. Paul straight up calls it. Why do you need hope if you already got it? Right. If you already have it, it's already in front of you. It's tangible. You can touch it. You can smell it. Why do you need hope? Hope is not good for you if you already have it. We need hope because of the things that we do not yet have. We need hope because of the longing that we have, the desire that we have. Our deepest desire as Christians should be, Lord, I can't wait to be with you. That should be our deepest, deepest desire. Lord, I need more of you. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I know that you're the only one that can keep me. And yet, this earth, Lord, through my trials, through my tribulations, through everything I go through, you're in it. And my hope is in you because I know you will, one day will take me out of this. One day this trial will end. One day this thing that I'm struggling with will end. Why? Because I'm leaning on Him. I'm not relying on myself. If I rely on myself, not only will the trial last longer, but I will create more trials. <laughs> <laughs> I am a problem. I'm a problem to myself. And if I don't have that hope, that expectancy, and that faith, I become a problem with my relationship with Him. Because I'm not relying on Him. 
I need him. I need him. I called out to him when I needed salvation. I called out to him when I was broken, when I was in despair. I cried out to him when I had nowhere else to turn, and he answered me. He heard me. If he heard me in that disgusting mess, he will hear me today when I'm trying and I'm saying, Lord, I need more. I need you. So he already did the hard part. He redeemed us. He already redeemed us. But are we holding on to that? Do we remember that we've been redeemed? Do we remember that he's called us into his kingdom as sons and daughters? Do we remember that we belong to him and no longer ourselves? Do we remember these things? For we were saved in this hope. This hope is the very thing that brought us and drew us to him. The world had nothing to offer me except pain, hurt, and more mess. And when I heard the gospel, when I heard the good news of how he can deliver me, I was drawn to that hope. And we should still be drawn to that hope. That hope should not leave us. If anything, our hope needs to become more and more anchored, more and more in depth. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So if our hope is in him, in the future glory, in the fact that he's going to deliver us, in the fact that he's going to intervene for us, then we will continue to press in. We will continue to press in with endurance. That means under any situation, under any circumstance, under any trial, we are going to endure. We're not going to give up. We're not going to stop. We're not going to quit. We're going to be patient, waiting on the Lord. And that's a hard word. We hate the word wait. Wait. Wait on me. Wait. Wait and see that I am the Lord. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Yes, Lord, you are the Lord. Can you please move now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we see the little toddlers, like they can't wait. You promise them a treat, and they're like, okay, now, now, now. And they kind of hurry their little process, right? If you ask them, okay, um, if you go and do this for me, if you go and pick that up, I'll give you this. And they run, and they pick it up, and they're like, okay, they run back to you like, okay, now. Sometimes that's what we do with the Lord. Sometimes we try to hurry up. The Lord's like, okay, I want you to do my will. Okay, okay, hurry up, hurry up. And we go and do something. Okay, now Lord. It's like, seriously? We're not two years old. You know what I mean? Sometimes it, it looks like we might be two years old spiritually, but we're not. No matter what we're going through, wait patiently. Endure whatever it is you're enduring. Endure it. Continue to do a work for the Lord. Continue to keep doing what he's called you to do in that way continue your hope alive keep your eyes on jesus keep your eyes on him keep your eyes on the future glory that one day i no longer have to go through this and then whatever i'm going through all of a sudden becomes worth it if our hope is not in christ nothing that we experience in christianity will be worth it because you know what everybody out in the world doesn't have to go through this they don't have to sacrifice as much and they still get to do what they want. And it won't become worth it. We will look at the world like, man, they have something to offer me. When it should be the other way around. We have the answer to their loneliness. We have the answer to their trials, their, their turmoil. Their soul is in turmoil. Their soul is in vanity. Their soul is in bondage. We have the answer. Jesus Christ. But if we don't have that hope, how are we going to give them that hope? If we don't believe in ourselves, how are we going to tell somebody who's in bondage about the good news? 
about how my soul has been set free. Yeah, but I see you going through this. Yeah, but I have peace. Yeah. I have peace. I have the joy of the Lord. I have intimacy with him. I don't need all that. I have all that I need because I have Christ. And if we have that kind of relationship, if we have that kind of hope, whatever it is we face, it's worth it because I get to see you. I get to be with you for eternity, forever and ever and ever. And I get to eat, enjoy myself, and not gain weight. <laughs> and not go through the breakdown of my body. Not have to worry about the doctors not knowing my situation. I have love. I have peace. I have joy for all of eternity. And I get to sit with him. The king of my heart. I get to sit with him every day. And I get to take in fellowship. True companionship. So everything we experience here, it's worth it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Have you ever experienced a trial that's so deep that you have no words? You come before the Lord, you don't know what to pray. All you can do is be there and cry. Lord, these tears are my words. Holy Spirit, intercede for me because I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to expect. And the Spirit of God within me does that intercessing for me. And at the end of it, I get that touch. At the end of it, I get that peace. God knows that I'm weak. God knows our weaknesses. God knows your weakness. God knows that you have needs. But it's the Spirit of God in you that will prevail. It's the Spirit of God in you that's going to help you overcome those weaknesses. Because we will not make it about ourselves. If we get stuck on Chuck and stuck on ourselves, guess what? My hope is going to dwindle. Because I can't do anything. I want to with everything inside of me. Let me just handle it. Let me handle my business. Let me do this. Let me do that. I start thinking of what I can do to move it along. But everything just starts falling apart for. In the spirit of God in me, it's like, are you done yet? Are you done? Let me intercede, for I know the mind of God. I know the will of God. I will intercede on your behalf. You just have to let me in. You have to let me be. You have to let me reign. And all of a sudden, all that heaviness feels lighter. All of a sudden, all that heaviness is like, oh, well, that was dumb of me. I could have just let that go and let God be, you know, let God be God. That's my bad, Lord. Help me to learn. And to the next one. <laughs> and to the next one where I get stuck. And then he goes on. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Though things might be against us, God will take those very same things and turn them into something beneficial and something profitable in our walk. Those same things that are your weakness, those same people that come against you, the same trials, and all those things, God will use it for our benefit. How? If it's a trial, that trial forces us to seek God more than ever before. So then that means my relationship with God gets stronger. Those people that are coming against me, 
It teaches me perseverance. It teaches me how to love my enemies. So therefore, the fruits of the Spirit are being worked out in my life. If the enemy is coming at me with my weaknesses, it will force me to rely on the Spirit of God to intercede for me, then I can conquer. I will conquer my weakness through the empowerment of God because he's going to use those things for our benefit. God does not let nothing go to waste, let me tell you. He does not let anything go to waste. Though for us, it might feel like the world is on top of us. It feels like the world is crushing us. We can't do the things we used to be able to do. We don't know what the new normal is yet. We're still in the midst of all this craziness. Yet God is still going to use it to further his kingdom. If we don't stop. If we don't lose our hope. If we don't give up putting our eyes on him instead of what we see, we cannot put our eyes on the things we see because the things we see change like that. Today, we know normal. Tomorrow, there is no normal. We don't know what tomorrow holds. So everything that's being done in us today, God is gonna use it to our benefit, not only today, but for our walk to, as we continue to go forward. But this is for those who reverence God. This is for those who are doing his work, who are faithful to his service and to his work. If I'm being disobedient to God, can I expect these things to profit me? No, because his word commits me. His word tells me this is what I want. So you are contradicting my word by your action. Oh, that means I have to make a choice. I have to make it right if I want to continue to be faithful to God. So if we reverence him, if we serve him, if we obey his word, he's going to use everything for our good. He's going to turn it around. It might not feel like it today, but it will be turned around. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. You get that? We are to be conformed to Christ. Not to ourselves, our opinions, our thoughts, our wants, but we are supposed to be conformed to Christ. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, who he predestined, these he also called. Who he called, these he also justified. And who he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That is so reassuring. So reassuring. Whatever is against you, it cannot come against God. It cannot come against God's purpose in your life. So let's say we have a health problem that's stopping us. It can't stop God's purpose in our lives. Those people that turn on you, they can't stop God's purpose in your life. Those situations that we feel like are never going to be changed. We see this like going around the mountain, going around. We're back in this again. It cannot stop the purpose of God in your life. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall not, he not only with him also freely give us all things? That means not only do we have to go through the same things Christ went through, but we also have the same benefits Christ has. We have the same benefits as Christ. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and therefore is also risen. Who is, who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Christ also makes intercession for us. We are in good hands. We are in good hands. Why do we distrust him? 
Why? Why do we doubt his goodness? If he's interceding for us, he paid the price for us. He suffered for us. He wants to do good. Who shall separate from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, if Christ is the center of our heart, if Christ is the center of our life, if our hope is in him, nothing is going to pull you away from the love of God. Nothing. No trial. No, what does it say? No tribulation, no distress, no persecution, no famine, or nakedness will separate us from his love. These things will not move us. These things will not cause us to become weak in our faith and therefore separate us from him. These things, in spite of these things, as we're enduring in this hope, waiting for Christ, we will continue to press in. We will hold on to the hope of his coming, of the future glory that we will be entering into. Why? Because through him, we conquer all things. He already conquered everything. He conquered those weaknesses in our life. He conquered those things. He knew that they were going to happen. He actually says over and over in his word, trials and tribulations will come, but take courage. I have already overcome the world. So today, take courage. Don't lose sight of Christ. Don't lose hope. Put your desires and your longings back on him. Back into the things that one day we're not going to have to suffer through these things anymore. Because he's going to deliver us. He already delivered our soul. He will also deliver us from all the other things that we go through in this world. Let's look at our life. If we've been in God one year, two years, ten years, fifty years, we have seen God been faithful to delivering us from one trial after another trial, from one persecution after another persecution. Will he not do that still today? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can trust him. We can hold on to him. Because he loves us. To the point where he came and died for us. He overcame everything for our sake, on our behalf. So it's not much to ask if he just asks us to endure. If he just asks us to wait on him. If he says that we need to hold on to our hope, it's not much to ask. It's going to take faith to continue in this walk. It's going to take hope to hold on to every ounce of strength that we have. We shall see God fulfill his promises. We shall see God fulfill his purpose in our lives. And that will give us the energy and the strength that we need. It brings life back into us. So if you feel weak today in your Christian walk, get your hope back. Put your eyes back on Christ. He overcame. He will help you overcome. If you feel like you have a longing that hasn't been fulfilled, wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. Serve Him. Reverence Him. And watch Him do the work. Most importantly, never give up. Never give up your hope. Never give up 
because the world looks better. It's a lie. We will find everything, our all, our full satisfaction in Christ if we only seek Him. Amen? Almighty God, you are so good. You are so faithful, my God.